Carol very kindly asked me uh, if I would help just tie everything together towards the end of the day. It seemed a very easy job. I've, I've taken some notes. I don't know if they'll help. Um, and what I thought I'd do for the next 10 minutes or so is just walk you through some of the conversation that we've had with the team in the centre, re-examining strategy and purpose and where we're going at what seemed like a sensible break point in the conversation. So I want to be very clear, I'm not saying that this was, gee, after nine years we just thought we should have a strategy. It was simply a, a reassessment of where we're going and, att and an attempt, I suppose, to crystallise something which was inter inherently quite fuzzy from the outset. So I'll, I'll just share my thoughts with that, uh, on that with you. Um, so it is this process of revisiting or crystallising or, or reviewing not rather than you know, from a, a blank template. And of course, as somebody who studies strategy in my, in my day job, the first question I always find myself asking with organisations is, this is a strategy to do what? You, know, you, you only develop a strategy when you want to make more money or do something or other in the commercial sector. And so for the centre, what is the challenge that the centre has been facing? And what we've heard over the course of today and certainly in this afternoon's conversations is this really interesting sense that there's a deeply embedded resilient difficulty in the health outcomes that are being achieved in this part of the world. And it is simultaneously, to take Harry's point, something which we are getting to the bottom of, and maybe it's time to move from thinking about or trying to understand to doing something about. And yet, simultaneously, it's something which is a bit elusive. I was quite taken with the idea that the Starling's Wings conversation took life and people began to think, oh yeah, maybe that's the thing, maybe there's another thing. And I can see one of the centre staffs, David, there thinking, oh God, that's another thing that I'm going to have to investigate. <laughs> I would just like to reappropriate the song from Hugh and Cry. It's actually a Michael Mara song. It's a very beautiful song. <laughs> um, so there is a something that the centre is trying to do, you know, to make progress against, and it is this issue about the, the health of the city. And of course the centre, as Harry also pointed out in his remarks, has a particular structural place. It's in the white space in this diagram. The phrase that we used in the conversations that we had with the team is that it is of course of the various partner organisations, but it is not in those partner organisations. One might be tempted to say that it, you know, it's the kind of entity which reaches the problems that other parts of the system cannot reach, if you wanted to paraphrase a, a, a highly inappropriate beer advert. You know. But it's positioned in a way which allows it to address problems at the overlap and at the boundary in ways that the individual partners themselves, and I come from one of those partner organisations, couldn't address on its own. And in that sense, that's a very distinctive feature of the, the organisation. But it draws up a set of questions about boundaries. You know, what should we do in the centre and what should be done naturally in the, the City Council or in the, the Health Service? It draws up a set of questions about governance and these partner organisations which are related to this entity but not, in a sense, directly in control of it. How do we engage with that? And the governance structures in the centre uh, with the board with, constituted by members like myself from the partner organisations and then the external advisory body, some of whom are in the room today, is there to try and manage the tensions that this unique structural position throws up for the centre. And finally, of course, it throws up a set of questions about the remit of the centre. What should the Glasgow Centre for Population Health do? Should it follow a line of argument to do with starling clipping? Should it follow vitamin C being injected into your bacon butty in the morning, how should we, how should we move forward? And so what the, we did in, as a group with the, the, the staff of the centre over four conversations at about a three or four weekly cycle over a couple of months, was just trying to revisit and re-articulate this sense of purpose. And this is what we came up with. This is a sense of mission statement or endeavour and of course I'm deeply uncomfortable with the notion of mission statement because they get lambasted here, there and everywhere but they are helpful as, as a process of trying to articulate things and so if I just walk through this phrase the thing about the centre is it's of course trying to generate new insights 
and work with evidence. If the centre works with evidence which is already out there and is trying to re-examine data sets that already exist and some of its research activities generate new insights and new data. You've just heard from Carol what a diverse range of perspectives the centre has tried to bring towards this resilient and difficult problem uh, over the nine or so years that we've been in operation. And it is trying to think differently about the problem. I think that's important. But its structural position, which is the thing that Harry had picked up on, of being of but not in the partner organisations, suggests that our purpose in the centre is to try and inform, but also actively to influence those in policy making and in practice roles that can make a difference to the way in which health out outcomes are being achieved or delivered. And there's a fairly broad definition there about trying to improve both the health of the population as a whole in the city, but also to address something that I'm sure most people in the room feel quite strongly about, the health inequalities issues that have come up already uh, in today's conversation several times. And James had a very nice definition of partnership, so this, you know, this unique structural position might just require quite a lot of mutual self-loathing from the partner organisations, but at its most promising, the partnership of the, the organisations that constitute the centre is the most likely recipe for some step change in performance over the next 10 or 15 years. What we did in the, in the conversations was try to articulate the way in which the centre works as a set of guiding principles which are embedded in the, the little booklet which was in your pack. And so the centre is not an instant, give you the answer by four o'clock tomorrow, research and development activity. It is taking this longer term view and uh, that's central to the way in which the centre works. It is trying to draw what evidence is available about a complex, messy, emergent, dynamic situation, bring that to the table and behave in an ethical and responsible way when giving that advice. We heard from Carol in the seminar series and in other aspects of the research of the centre, it is trying to be creative and thoughtful and, uh, and to move beyond boundary and functional and disciplinary views of uh, this problem. It tries to be collaborative because there is this partnership agenda, but also to be challenging, and that's something that I'll come back to in a moment. And the centre is also trying to build capacity to deal with this multi-dimensional problem. There have been some really good examples, I think, of people who've moved into the centre from the partner organisations and sometimes back into those partner organisations again. And I think that's an underdeveloped part of the, the centre's purpose over its next phase of development, perhaps. So in terms of making a contribution, having voice in the discussion and debate around the difficult health and health inequalities that prevail in West Central Scotland, the centre then is seeking to act as a critical friend to those who shape the efforts that are ongoing to improve the health outcomes and reduce health inequalities in the city of Glasgow. And this phrase which came up in our conversations around a critical friend struck me as being, it resonated with me as being a useful way of describing what's going on. A critical friend one might think of in more than one way. There is the organisational equivalent of the, you know, the friend who's honest enough with you to say, does my bum look big in this? Yes, it does actually. There's also that critical friend in the sense of the tobacco example that Carol just mentioned of, you know, holding to account and saying the awkward thing and and connected to the other guiding principles about trying to be ethical and have evidence base and be constructive and be collaborative, the centre often will find itself in relatively uncomfortable territory relative to its partner organisations, which might go back to James's point about this process of mutual loathing. But I think this position of the centre is a critical, supportive, but honest account of how we might make a difference and move from a process of somewhere around 10 years worth of trying to understand the problem and pick up Harry's challenge and say, the next 10 years are maybe about trying to make a difference to the problem. You know, I think that's a very distinctive position. So the centre seems to me, having evolved through a number of phases of work and being partway through this current phase, to have already begun to offer a really valuable contribution into this uh, territory in this conversation. It's engaged with some of the best ideas that are going on globally and you know 
the, the, if I, I'm an eternal optimist, if you take Glasgow's appalling health records relative to what it should be, you can say, wow, the world will pay attention. If we make a difference in Glasgow, we will, people will beat a path to our door to try and understand how we have done that. And so engaging with not just the specifics of our own situation in this particular location, but what's going on elsewhere in the world and other ways of thinking about it, very good. And that in qu requires us to think about the problem, not just in a, our local context, but there is work in the centre that's looked at us nationally across the UK territory. Try to avoid Harry's point about getting too political. You know, the, the Three Cities project that's looked at outcomes relative to other cities which are similar to, but not identical to Glasgow, and internationally as well. And as it has been doing that, I think it is really sensible at this symposium. It makes, it, it makes a great deal of sense to draw attention to the fact that the centre has become an internationally recognised centre of excellence in this particularly difficult territory and has become a place and a resource that academics, practitioners, members of the community go to for information. The fact that Carol has just told you that you get 100 or so people pitching up at each of these seminars, not all of whom are the usual suspects, it's a phenomenal achievement, actually. It's something that we should be very proud of. So in a fairly short overview, I just wanted to give you a take on what is our current attempt to articulate the strategy and purpose and direction of travel of the organisation. And these guiding principles are, I wouldn't suggest to you, uh, a finished and, and cast in stone product. They are, if you like, the latest working sketch. And we'd really like feedback on how those might be operationalised, what, what they might mean, how we might work with them, how we might improve them. And, uh, and so as a, a closing part of the conversation, trying to tie up some of the various strands of today's conversation, I'll draw breath there. Okay, thanks.